Nick Diaz was at the show. He was at the pay-per-view on Saturday. Camera did a little cameo to him. Got him some nice seats. But you just start to wonder, why was he there? Like, was Nate out there, for example? Was Nate out there doing some level of press? And so Nick came along. I, I don't know why Nick was there. It's hard to get Nick to a show in his hometown. It's hard when Nick's living in Vegas to get him to a show that's in Vegas. Why was he in Florida? I, I don't know. I don't have the answer. Dana got asked about Nick at the press conference. Dana said, as a matter of fact, he is ready to fight. I'm going to go talk to him as soon as I get done with you guys. He's in the back. He's waiting for me right now. Okay. That sounds like pretty good news for someone like me. I'm a Nick fan. I want to see Nick fight. I was at Nick's last fight. That last fight, by the way, was roughly six years ago. This is off the top of my head. It was at 185 pounds. We heard when Nick was going to come back, when he started talking about this, that he was going to come back maybe at 155. Then there was discussion of 170, and there is a problem of what do you do with Nick, which Dana had alluded to or said the name Hazmet Shemaev. That would solve a lot of problems because Nick is a problem. If you're Dana and you're a promoter and you put on fights the same way every recipe every time, which is nothing but champions and championship contenders, you're either fighting for the championship or you're trying to prove that you are in contention for a championship or your time here is done. Pretty straightforward. What do you do with a Nick Diaz? Because he's neither of those things. He's, just, he's at the age. He, he's just not. We know he's not the champion, but he's also at that age where we're rebuilding and coming back, not to mention if we're to look at history, his last fight being six years ago, you don't know what this guy's going to do. You don't want him to come in, right? He could throw everything off. He could also, he could do what his brother did. Remember when Nate comes back and fights Pettis, but it's the, the best you've ever seen Nate look? Oh my God, who is that guy? What do you do with him? Well, they did the only thing you can do. You main event him at the garden for a title. I mean, you see the problem, but let's say it's Nick. Let's say Nick comes in and he shows us, oh my God, he's gotten better. Cleaned up his act, student of the sport, something along these lines. When he takes his shirt off, you look at his body. He didn't look that good when he was fighting. He looks better now. Does that translate? Should we read the book by a cover? Does that translate? And Nick Diaz is going to be better than he's ever been. Let's just say, well, does he want to come back and do it again? Or is he going to take another six-year break? What are we doing here? Why are we here? Because all the other guys here are either champions or on a path to become champions. So why are you here? Right? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Is it a cash grab? Is it a way of getting healthy, of getting back in shape, and it's a goal? I don't know that there's a wrong answer, but you also aren't wrong to ask the questions and want to hear the answer. Because there's some very big guys, and it's not just Nick. There's some very big guys that are in a similar situation. And I don't, know, I don't know how locked into this whole idea of only champion and only contenders can be here. I think there is a caveat. I think like anything in life, there can be extenuating circumstance. I think when you get a pool of guys, Nick Diaz, George Masvidal, Conor McGregor, Right? I mean, if Connor doesn't turn things around in this Poirier fight, now Connor's one of those guys. Went from being the man to just being a big draw. You're not, you're not the champion and you're never going to be, but we don't want to release you. There's still something special here. And you know what? There is. Absolutely. Red Panty Night is still a very real thing. George Moswell is a huge star. I don't know of any scenario where Moswell wants to climb back to number one contendership. Moswell's fought 50 men. Masvidal's been doing this since he was underage and lying that he was an adult. I mean, in all fairness, I don't know that Masvidal needs to or wants to jump back in to that wood chipper and try to come out the top guy and, you know, just wait to see what happens. And maybe Usman gets beat and Colby comes in here and that's a fight that they want. And George can, can slide back in with one or two wins. I, I don't know that that's what he wants to do. That's okay. That's okay because there's a respect that we have to show to the George Masvidal. George Masvidal got to the spot that he's in now by giving to us. So there's, there's a spot where now we can get back to him. Say, hey, George, it's okay. This belt and all that stuff, that was your dream. That was never our dream. Our dream is to watch you in fights that we find interesting. The same as our dream is for Nick Diaz. 
And the same as, look, I mean, it's on the cusp. Connor's calling out Usman right now. Connor's got a big task in front of him, and he's either he's either going to right this wrong, or Connor's going to become one of those guys. That's okay. I think we should have a few of those guys around. I think we can have a few of these, these veterans around that have already put their time in, but before we send them out to pasture, we keep them in a little, little unannounced, but little organization for themselves. I don't think I lost any of your guys' attention when I hinted or insinuated Nick Diaz versus George Masvidal. I don't think I lost any of your guys' attention when I hinted at or insinuated Conor McGregor versus Nick Diaz. I think if you were to bring him in with Hazmat Chemayev, I understand where that makes a lot of sense. I know what the odds are going to be. Hazmat's going to go kill him. I, I, I get it. But Nick will offer you something at a minimum that you haven't seen before. I don't think the odds makers, and I don't think any of you believe Hosmet's going to be the one guy to come out, hit Nick Diaz, knock him out, and put him away. Nick is a very durable guy. Nick does not go away. There's positions where you can control him. That's true, but that's not what we're talking about, and that would still offer us something different from Shemaya. It's an interesting match. I, I understand fully that you're going to believe that Hosmet's going to beat him. Say that. That's a fight prediction. I'm not talking about the prediction right now. I'm talking about that's an interesting match. And Nick would bring things out of Hosmet Shemaev that nobody else has. First up would be a second round. Okay. <laughs> All right. If I told you you could bet this fight, oh, by the way, do you think it, it's a first round or more? You're all betting. No, it's more than one round. Nobody gets rid of Nick Diaz in one round. I agree with you. But nobody gets rid of Nick Diaz in two rounds either. Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre couldn't get rid of him in three rounds. I mean, right? They went they, they went all night with these guys. And he's gonna go, he's gonna go a long time with Hosmet Shemaev, and it's going to be a very different fight. Not gonna come out and hit Nick and gonna see him wilt. Nick's a tough guy. That's an interesting match, but I also I get what Dana's thinking there. He can't just he can't bring Nick in with a nobody because Nick's a big high dollar guy. He's gonna have a very beautiful placement on a card. He also comes with no ranking whatsoever. When Nick left, left the sport six years ago, he had no ranking. So we can't really put him against the top guy. Ooh, and by the way, in this sport, anything happens and he can go out and take out the number two guy, but we don't know that he wants to go and fight the champion himself. We don't even know when he's going to fight again. I mean, right? Do you see where there's problems here? But I think you also see why it, it makes sense to work with him. Yes, there's conflicts. And no, not everybody's treated the same. But the guys that aren't treated the same have earned it. Don't forget that. Nick Diaz has earned this. He has earned something. He has earned that he's not a champion. He's not a championship contender, but he's got a very meaningful place, and it's going to be at the end of the night. In a worst-case scenario, Nick Diaz is a co-main event. It's going to be at the end of the night. And when guys sit around, they always want to argue about their rankings. That's because they're missing it. The ranking doesn't matter. The placement of the car does. And Nick's going to slide right in with no ranking at the end of the night. But the rest of the fighters and their little managers and their little astute teams are sitting around looking at a number next to a name, and they're missing what's happening. They're missing what's happening to the guy who lost his last fight, by the way, that was six years ago, is going to come in, he's going to make more money than all of you, and he's going to close out the night. There's a lesson in these things. Do you really want to be champion? Do you? Do you want to be champion? Okay, I get that. Do you really want to be the number one contender? Do you? Okay. Well, what if you had to choose of one of the three? Number one contender was on the table, champion was on the table, or you could be Nick Diaz where the result of your matches don't matter. The outcome of your match doesn't matter. That is the ultimate place in a career that you could ever get, and it's rare, and there's reasons you got there, and there's a lot of hard work and a lot of strategy, and you brought a lot of fans on the journey, and they didn't jump off the wagon. But if you can get to where the outcome does not matter, you can lose and come back and be a main event. You could lose being the highest paid guy of the night. You're going to come back and you're still going to be the highest paid guy of the night. That is the absolute sweet spot. Guys don't think that way. Guys don't see it. Very few of them end up there, but very few of them have their goals. 
You're not going to get a manager to sit you down and explain this to you. The managers that you've entrusted with your career don't know the fight business. But most of you don't know it either. And I'm talking directly to the fighters, not just to the viewer here. Most of you don't know it either. I might have just taught you something, but the sweetest spot in the whole sport of your career is when you get to a point that the outcome doesn't matter. 